Hey Rail fans, this is Bob from the Bob's End Scale Man Cave. Today I'm going to talk about a new project to go on the ceiling layout for my bedroom area, which I have not quite built yet. What I'm going to need to do is figure out how to span from one wall to the other wall across a corner, which I would like to use a bridge. I'm going to kind of have to use a bridge because that corner has a couple windows right there in the corner and my wife's got uh, curtains and everything else that are in the way so it makes it all nice and pretty for the bedroom. But So I want to cut across that and make it uh, a self-supporting uh, bridge just like real bridges are without any piers, you know, the short bridges over, over a road or something. But this is going to be four feet long in end scale without any peering or any ceiling support. So it's a freestanding bridge. Sure, I could have made it out of, you know, half inch uh, board or something like that, but it would just look wrong. I wanted something that looked um, a little cooler. So what I'm going to do is I'm kind of making an HO slash N scale uh, bridge. But I'm using, wait for it, popsicle sticks. Yes, regular old popsicle sticks. I did not eat all the popsicles to get the sticks. I went down to Hobby Lobby bought a box of 1,000 Woodsies popsicle sticks and also picked up some basswood strips. This one happens to be a 24 inch long uh, 3 16 by 3 8 inch uh, strip of wood. We've got a few of those. That is going to be uh, the main bracing of the bridge and where the popsicle sticks will attach to. Um, the design for the bridge comes from this Cotto through truss bridge and it's sort of like a <coughs> a, a Warren truss but it's not quite a Warren truss because as you can see the angles of these V's actually look like a real V instead of a 90 degree V that you see in a typical Warren uh, truss. These are actually at 67 degrees and the angle themselves is a 45 degree on itself. So as you can see, this seems to be a lot taller and in scale it is taller than a normal Warren truss. So with this four foot long bridge, I've decided, well, I'm going to make an expanded version of this to make it more stronger for when it's in the middle and it doesn't bow like that when uh, three or four engines go across at a time or just bowing on its own weight. I want something that's going to be solid and level and actually be a bridge instead of just a board that I placed across this gap and put some uh, wood on top of it to make it look like a bridge. What I did was I traced out the angles, put it on a piece of paper, and once I drew out the, the angles that were on the bridge, I extended it out a little bit farther, measured my popsicle stick uh, widths, uh, the widths of my uh, bracing, the, the beams that everything's going to be uh, connected to, so I can figure out where it's going to look, how, how much room I needed from top to bottom. Once I figured that all out, took this little uh, angle tool right here. And carpenters use this for doing roofing and stuff. And in fact, uh, I found this in the yard after they had done my roof. What it has on there is you can see the degrees marked off on the top. I just put down this end in the corner and laid it on there and followed the lines. Where did the degrees hit? And it said 67 degrees. 
Oh, okay, cool. That works. I like this tool. And then I went, well, what's the angle of the actual V? I laid it right there on the top of the angle, put one of the lines on this end, and it cut right across at uh, 45 degrees. Okay, well that makes sense. I also used one of these T-squares. nice thing about this ruler is it goes down to 30 seconds of an inch, which I needed to uh, determine exactly as close as possible what the length of each of these pieces of wood was going to be on the popsicle sticks at least. Some of the things you're going to need to build this bridge that I've come across so far. What I needed was the wood. I needed the popsicle stick. I needed a plan which I used uh, the SCARM software for because you could get down to the nitty-gritty and do the uh, decimal point uh, measurements and move your mouse and drop your line exactly where it is and make a basically a, a drawing so to speak that you can fill in with specific colors placed all that on there all those pieces and copied all those pieces and laid it all out measured from top to bottom this is how far it should be printed it out in a four foot long piece of paper which actually is five pieces of paper and uh, have it taped down to my table now what I'm going to need of course is some glue some tight bond wood glue is what I'm using now you have a choice you can use a little hand saw like maybe a track saw or one of these little uh, track rail clippers that probably just about everybody's got and it cuts a nice flush angle. You got this little angle right here. Just clipped it off. There it goes. Now you gotta be careful. That piece of wood that comes off here on the end, it flies. Because I've got 78 of these to cut times two sides to cut the little round side off the popsicle stick. Uh, what you'll need after that is sandpaper or a file to file down the the pinched wood part of the part you just cut off and what you'll also need is maybe some tweezers got some nice tweezers for some of the smaller parts one thing I forgot to mention is I've got these little wood shapes they look like railroad ties but really really long railroad ties um, I'm going to use that for the cross bracing between the two trusses May need some uh, scotch tape, may need a sharpie, or a pen, or a pencil, straight edge. Because you may need something straight to push up against for your uh, wood to be nice and flush with the rest of the wood. So I'm going to paint it gray to make it look a little more like a steel structure instead of a wood structure. The reason being is I'm going to take uh, the Cotto pure girder bridge sections. I'm going to mount those on top because this is going to be a deck truss bridge. Not a stand up over the top of the track truss bridge. Be, the truss will be underneath. This truss is going to be like an HO. It's not going to be quite HO. It's going to be almost HO scale, but it's going to be definitely bigger than an N scale. Now, as you can see, this popsicle stick and these trusses are definitely wider than an end scale beam would be. But we're making a bridge that's not end scale that would be in reality at full scale. Uh, it'd be like taking five of these trusses that you see in reality with piers underneath and connecting them all together without any piers and trying to span the same span. I'm going to make it thick, make it strong. I could probably hang clothes on this thing if I wanted to, but I just want to make sure it doesn't sag. And uh, this is one way of doing it because I just want it to be a freestanding bridge not having to screw it down to keep it level. 
which I would have had to do in a different uh, configuration that I was thinking about doing. So there you have it. That's what I've got planned for this bridge. Remember, if you want to see more of how I put this bridge together, subscribe down here or over here or up here. I might even put it up here. So subscribe. Also, if you're into the YouTube community who makes videos for model railroading, you've got to join the YouTube Model Railroaders page on Facebook. That's where a lot of the big name people, like myself, are join that group and we find out more information on how to make videos, how to do our model railroading, you know, get all sorts of information and support from this community page. So I encourage you to uh, check that out. I'll put the link below. Basically it's facebook.com slash YouTube model railroaders after that.